Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are still in chapter 1 matter. And now we're going to focus on the new subtopic which is 1.3, stoichiometry, part 1 of the video. So in this video, we're going to determine the oxidation number of an element in the chemical formula. Also, we're going to focus on the learning outcome B1 which is to write and balance chemical equation by using the inspection method. Okay, so we're going to focus on this and this in part 1 of the video, B2 we're going to focus on part 2, and C and D we're going to focus on part 3. So without any further, further ado, let us start with part 1 of the video first. So balancing chemical equation. So a chemical equation shows a chemical reaction using symbol for the reactants and product. So the formula are written on the left hand side, meanwhile the product are written on the right hand side. And as what you can see here is that, there's going to be a stoichiometric coefficient, which is W, X, Y, and Z here. And W, X, Y, and Z here uh, can be written as number. It might be 2 carbon dioxide, and Y might be number 1. Okay, so basically X, W, X, Y, and Z is just a balancing coefficient. And... Uh, the total number of atoms of each element need to be the same on both sides of a balance equation. Means that the same number of atoms uh, on the reactant need to have the same number of the atoms on the product side. Okay, and in order to balance an equation, there are two ways we can do that. First is the inspection method, where we're going to look into this in this video, and the next one is the ion electron method, which we're going to look about that in the next video okay so inspection method basically involve normal chemical equation meanwhile ion electron method will focus on the redox equation okay but now we're going to focus on number one first so inspection method so inspection method uh, we started off we started off with the unbalanced equation and the most important thing is we need to write the correct formula, formula for the reactant and product. And the way that we can balance it is we can, we can start with balancing the metallic element first, followed by the non-metallic atom, and then hydrogen followed by oxygen. And at every time we need to ensure that the total number of atoms of each element is same on both sides of the equation. To understand more about the inspection method, let us look into the example given. So, we have to balance the chemical equation by applying the inspection method. Okay, so, this is a normal chemical equation and it is something that you have learned in your high school. So, it's just like a revision here. So, as what you can see here, we have aluminium react with hydrochloric uh, sulfuric acid in order to produce aluminium sulfate and hydrogen. Okay, and as, as I mentioned that, uh, by using the inspection method, we're going to uh, balance the atoms of metallic first, followed by the non-metal, and then we have the hydrogen, followed by oxygen. So, in this case, the metal is aluminium. So, we have two aluminium here, but here we only have one. So, we need to put number two here. Okay, so aluminium got 2 on the left hand side and aluminium got 2 on the right hand side and now the non-metal so the non-metal is sulfur okay because uh, the non-metal atom is something that is different from hydrogen and oxygen so hydrogen oxygen so the balance is sulfur so, so the sulfur is the non-metallic atom here so sulfur in this case we have 3 because it is in the bracket, so S times 3, so you're going to have 3 atoms of sulfur. But on the left hand side, S here only got 1. And hence, you cannot write 3 here. Okay, you cannot put S3 here because you, you change the formula. But what you can do is, you can only add the part here, which is the coefficient part, not the formula part. Okay, so we have... 3 times S, so the S here is going to have 3 as well. Alright, and now we move on to the next atom, hydrogen. 
Okay, so hydrogen here, we only have two. And the hydrogen here, three, H2. So it becomes six because three times two, right? So H have six here. So in this case, we need to put number three here so that three times two is going to become six. Okay, and the last one is oxygen. So oxygen, on the left hand side, we have three times O4. So it's going to be 12. Okay, because three multiplied by four. In this case, yes, you have 12 as well because four O4 bracket three. So you're going to become O12. Okay, so oxygen is going to be 12. Okay, so when you have the same number of atoms on both left hand side and the right hand side, which is the reactant and product, then you have the correct balancing equation. So you're going to have two aluminium solid plus three sulfuric acid aqueous produces one mole of aluminium sulfate and three mole of hydrogen. Okay, and ensure that you write the phases as well when it is given. Okay, so the phases is important. So you need to write that also. Okay, nice one. Let's move on to the next question. Example number two. So we have to balance the chemical equation as well by using the inspection method. So similar uh, procedure as before, balance metal first, followed by the non-metal, hydrogen, and then oxygen. So the metal in this equation is, on the left-hand side, we have the copper. So copper is a metal. So it's a metal that you can see in the wire and yeah, is acting as a metal. So copper on the left hand side have one. On the right hand side, we have also have one copper. So no problem with that. And then we have non-metal. So in this case, the non-metal is nitrogen. Okay. So the nitrogen. So the nitrogen here on the product side have two. Okay. So two here. However, in the uh, Reactant side, we only have one. Okay, and for that reason, we need to multiply the whole uh, molecule by two. So, in the, at the end, we're going to have two nitrogen. Okay, and now once we, we already settled metal, we already settled non metal, and now we're going to focus to hydrogen. So, in this case, the hydrogen here is going to have H2, so only two hydrogen. On the left hand side, 2 times H3. So we're going to become 6 hydrogen. So the hydrogen on the product side is not equal. So we can add 3 hydrogen at the front. Okay, 3 water at the front. So we're going to become H2 multiplied by 3, we're going to become 6. Okay, and now we're going to focus on oxygen. So oxygen here, we have 3 O. So it's going to become 3. On this side, oxygen only have 1. Okay? So you need to put 3 at the starting, at the molecule part. So you're going to have 3 oxygen. Okay? Okay? So it is not balanced yet because, because when you add number 3 here at the front, the copper becomes 3 as well. Okay? So it's going to become... 3 because you already put number 3 here and as a result you also need to put number 3 at the product side so that the number of copper is maintained so as what you can see here copper got 3 on the left hand side and 3 copper on the right hand side so correct and correct nitrogen 2 nitrogen so here 2 and 2 so it's correct hydrogen 2 H3, so you're going to have 6 hydrogen. Okay, here 3 H2, okay, 6 hydrogen. And then oxygen, 3 oxygen, so correct. 3 oxygen, so that's correct. So this is how you're going to balance the equation by doing it inspectively, doing it one by one and calculating the number of atoms for metal, non metal, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay. Now we're going to move on to the next example, which is example 3. Okay, the same thing, we need to uh, balance the equation using inspection method. 
So for this case, we have a similar procedure, metal, non-metal, hydrogen, and oxygen, but we don't have any metal here. So metal we don't have, so we can, we're going to skip that, that step. Non-metal, we have the carbon. So the carbon going to be the non-metal. So we're going to start with carbon first. So carbon on the left-hand side, we have 6. Carbon on the right-hand side, we're going to have 1. So we're going to put 6 at the front here. Okay, so we have 6 carbon. And then hydrogen. So hydrogen on this side here, you can see that the hydrogen has 6. But here, only have 2 hydrogen. And hence, you're going to put 3 hydrogen here. So that 3 times 2 is going to become 6. Okay, and now you're going to focus on oxygen. So oxygen here, 6 times O2. Okay, you're going to have 12 oxygen. Okay. And then 3 times O1. Okay, so you're going to become 15 altogether. But here, you're going to have O2 only. So only got, only got 2 oxygen. Okay, because O2. And for this reason, what you can do, you can put it as 15 over 2. So because 15 over 2 times 2, you're going to get 15 oxygen. Okay, so the balancing here, the coefficient here is going to be 15 over 2. Okay, and as a result for that, we're going to get the balancing, the balanced chemical equation to be C6H6, 15 over 2 oxygen gas, 6 mole of carbon dioxide and 3 mole of water. Okay, and sometimes in certain cases, you can also further divide this equation by 2, by multiplying it by 2, so that you're going to get, okay, uh, I put it upstairs here, so you're going to get 2C6, H6, plus 15 over 2 times 2, we're going to get 15 or 2, and then 6 times 2, going to get 12CO2, plus 6H2O, because 3 times 2 as well. Okay, and you need to write the fastest as well. Okay, so sometimes it can also be written like this. Okay, because sometimes we don't use the fraction. And that is why we multiply by 2. Okay, so enough with inspection method. And now we're going to look into redox reaction a little bit. And we're going to look into on how to determine the oxidation number. So what is redox reaction? So redox reaction are basically both involve both reduction and oxidation. And that is why the name of the reaction is redox reaction because it involves reduction and oxygen. So for oxygen, it basically involves loses one or more electron. For example, we have ferrum solid, which is iron. And then when it loses electron, for example, 3 mole of electron, you can see that the electron is being removed and as a result, the oxidation number increases from 0 here, from no charge, 0, into 3 plus. So there's going to be an increase in oxidation number. And because it undergo oxidation, it's going to act as a reducing agent. Okay, similarly to reduction, for example, you have chlorine, okay, for example, chlorine gases atom, and when it receives one electron, what is going to happen, it's going to become Cl minus gaseous ion, okay, and as a result of receiving an electron, there's going to be a decrease in oxidation number from zero into negative one. Okay, from no charge into negative charge. Okay, and it because it undergo reduction, it's going to act as an oxidizing agent. Okay, now for the redox reaction, one of the most important element is to determine the oxidation number. So oxidation number can be determined by applying various rules. Okay, and for rules number one, in an element, an atom or a molecule will have the oxidation number to be zero. 
So element here can be existing in terms of atom, for example, sodium, or it, or it can exist in terms of molecule. Means that it came from the same type of atom, which is Cl and Cl. So when they have the same type of atoms or having the same element, means that the oxidation number here is going to be zero. For example, sodium zero, chlorine, because ClCl is going to be zero, magnesium atom is going to be zero. The bromine gas is going to be zero, and oxygen molecule going to, will also be going to be zero. Meanwhile, in the neutral molecule, the sum of the oxidation number of all atoms made up the molecule is equal to zero. For example, the oxidation number of water. So since water doesn't carry any charge, and hence the oxidation number of all atoms is going to be zero. The same goes to HCl, also going to be zero and the KMnO4, the total and the summation also going to be zero. Okay, for number three, for monoatomic ion, the oxidation number is equal to the charge of the ion. For example, sodium plus. So because you have plus, so the charge here or the oxidation number here for Na plus is going to be plus one. For magnesium, two plus, the charge is going to be plus two. And for the aluminium, it's going to be plus three. And for sulfur, 2 minus is going to be minus 2. Meanwhile, for polyatomic ion, the total oxidation number of all atoms, untuk kesemua atom, that made up the polyatomic ion must be equal to the net charge of the ion. So, for example, in this case, manganese O4 minus, so it have a total uh, oxidation number of all atoms to be negative. So, it's going to refer to negative 1. For chromate ion, it have two minus, so the ch the oxidation number is gonna be minus two. And for the NO three minus, the charge is gonna be minus one. Okay, so we are talking about the charge of the polyatomic ions, which means that poly refers to more than one, mono refers to one, poly more than one because it consists of manganese ion and the um, oxide ion okay and from here later you're going to learn on how to determine the oxidation number for nitrogen for example so let's say the oxidation number of nitrogen we given it to be x because we don't know and we need to find out plus three oxygen atom okay and each oxygen at okay three oxygen atom and then the charge of the molecule is negative one so we're going to put it like this Okay, here is oxygen, so we, we need to find x, and then the charge of oxygen is negative 2, because oxide, right? Okay, and it's going to equal to negative 1. And then, x here going to have plus 5. Okay, so the oxidation number is plus 5, but the charge or the oxidation number going to be 5 plus. Okay. So in rare cases, the nitrogen is going to have N5+. Plus. Okay, and this is how you're going to determine the oxidation number of the nitrogen. Okay, we're moving on for number 5. So fluorine and other halogen always have the oxidation number of negative 1 in its compound. Positive number will occur when it combines with oxygen. Okay, so fluorine usually will have a negative charge which is the oxidation number of fluorine, negative, which is negative 1. In HCl, because Cl is also a halogen, halogen is in group 17, so it can be fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Okay, usually, it's going to carry a negative 1. However, when it combines with oxygen, the positive number will appear here. Okay, and for this case, we're going to get plus 7. How do we know? The charge of Cl is 7 plus. How do we prove this? The way we're going to prove this is to do the same technique as before. For example, you need to find the oxidation number of Cl, right? So we have 2 Cl, and then the oxidation number of Cl we're going to put as x plus 7 oxygen equal to the charge of the molecule here is 0 because it doesn't have it doesn't carry any charge. So it's going to be 0 here. So 2x plus 7 negative 2 is equal to 0. 
and then 2x is equal to 14. Okay, and x here refers to 7. Therefore, the total charge of the chlorine or the halogen is going to be 7 plus. Okay, and this is how we're going to prove it. And as mentioned, the positive number occurs when it combines with oxygen. When it combines with other stuff rather than oxygen, it's going to be negative 1. Okay, and for number 6, hydrogen has an oxidation number of plus 1 in, it, in its compound, except in metal hydrides. Okay, so usually the hydrogen will have plus 1 as what you can see in the hydrochloric acid here. So, hydrochlor the hydrogen is going to have plus 1, the Cl is going to have minus 1. So, the total charge is going to be 0. Okay, and the hydrogen here, okay, which is oxidation number of hydrogen is plus 1. In this case, NaH is a metal hydride because sodium is a metal and the metal combined with hydrogen. So, it's going to become metal hydride. And because it, because it is a metal hydride, the hydrogen is going to have negative 1. Same goes to the magnesium dihydride here. Because you know that magnesium is also a metal. Okay? So when it is a metal, the hydrogen here is going to carry a charge of negative 1. Okay? And you can also prove that by telling that magnesium plus 2H is equal to 0 because it doesn't have any charge. So you know that the charge of magnesium is uh, plus 2 and then we have 2H is equal to 0. And then 2H is equal to negative 2 and H is equal to negative 1. And you know that the hydrogen is going to have a negative 1 when it is in a metal hydride. Alright? Now, we're going to look into the oxidation number of oxygen. So oxygen has an oxidation number of negative 2 in most of its compound. So in magnesium oxide, it's going to be negative 2. So you can prove it by yourself. And the same goes to water. Okay. So, however, there's going to be an exception. So exception here in the hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O2. So in H2O2, the oxidation number of oxygen is going to be negative 1. Because you can also prove that. Okay, so 2H plus 2 oxygen. The charge of the molecule is 0, right? So 2H means that hydrogen will have positive 1 charge. So you're going to be 2 plus 2 oxygen equal to 0. So 2 oxygen, okay, this one is oxygen here, yeah, is equal to negative 2. So the oxygen is equal to negative 1. Okay, oxygen is equal to negative 1. And that is where we find the charge of the nitrogen going to be negative 1. Usually it is negative 2. Okay? Now to understand more about this, let us look into the example here. So we need to assign the oxidation number of chromium in chromium 2 or 7 to minus. So as mentioned before, you know that the charge of the molecule is 2 minus. So you know that it is equal to negative 2. So we have 2Cr plus 7 oxygen. Okay, it's equal to negative 2. And the charge of oxygen is negative 2. And hence, you can say that 2Cr is equal to positive 12. And Cr here is equal to 6 plus. And hence, you can say that the oxidation number of Cr is 6 plus. Okay. Now we're going to do the second example, which is sulfur in SO4 to minus. So the charge of the molecule or the polyatomic ion is equal to negative 2. So we need to find sulfur. So sulfur plus 4 oxygen is equal to negative 2. And we know that oxygen is equal to negative 2. So it's going to be S equal to negative 2 plus 8. And hence, we can say that sulfur is equal to plus 6. And we can make a conclusion that sulfur has an oxidation number of 6 plus. Next, we're going to do Cl. Okay, and that's what you can see here. The charge of the molecule is 0. So, uh, the K will have an oxidation number of 1. Cl is written here. 
and oxygen we have three so it's going to be three times negative two is equal to zero so cl here is equal to plus five and hence you can say that the chlorine will have an oxidation number of five plus okay so i think that's all for today's video see you again some other time bye